Well, good morning from Chester Ridge Baptist Church. We are here today and we are going to be talking about God's power at work. Um, we're maybe in 1 Kings. We're going to kind of look today at 1 Kings, kind of give us a background, a little bit of update. Um, for 2 Timothy 1 7, it says, For the Spirit of God has not given us, the Spirit of God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind and we're going to see how that is come is true throughout our lesson today um, and so first as we just kind of update us to get us from where we were last week into this week and if ever you through and check into my past facebook's and you can you know grab hold of those and listen to them so we've just done a whole study on kings and so this has been pretty exciting um, and it's shocking to me how we've seen so many, and we'll see today, the kings are evil, but God uses the evil kings. And in 1 Kings, I'm, I'm going to start out with 1 Kings 16, it says, I lifted you up from the dust and I have appointed you over my people of Israel, but you have followed the ways of Jeroboam. Okay, so he's talking about King Basha. King Basha followed the ways of his forefathers. And that was evil. And so as he did that, um, that's what God said. So God said that. I didn't say that. Um, God says it. So he goes on to say, You have followed the ways of Jeroboam, which was his father, and cause my people Israel to sin and to and you have aroused my anger for their sins so I am about to wipe out Basha and all his house and I will make your house that of Jeroboam son of Nabat so that's kind of a prophecy of what's to come because they did not follow what God wanted them to do and as soon as he began to reign now I'm in 16 okay so now this was, um, remember, this was the word of the Lord that was coming against um, Jehu, the son of Hananiah, um, against Basha. Okay, so the word was going to them, but this is against Basha. And so what else does it say? It says, as soon as he began to reign, okay, and this is um, King Basha, as soon as he began to reign and was seated on the throne, so we're talking about two kings that were evil. So Basha was evil, and now we're talking about Elah. Elah was an evil king as well. Um, verse 5, it says, As soon as Basha's reign and all of his achievements are written in the other books, and so they're talking about Chronicles. And we remember, Chronicles kind of gives a, a number of detail of each one of the kings. Basha rested with it, um, and so we're going to now find out what happened. The word of the Lord came through the prophet of Jehu. So remember that first verse we read was given to Jehu from God. That was kind of a prophecy. Well, it wasn't kind of a prophecy. It was a prophecy. And so verse 11 is talking now about Elah. Elah, King Elah, was the son of Basha. Basha was now gone. Soon as he began to reign and seated on the throne, listen what happened. He killed the Basha. He killed their whole family. He did not spare a single male, not a relative or a friend. And so Zimri destroyed the whole family of Basha. So you see that all of these kings, and I know sometimes it gets confusing, but all of these kings and I'm going to have to take a picture and add this into um, the studies as I condense them all together. Because as you have, you have Basha, who is a father, and then you have Elah, and then you have Zimran. Zimran only lived, only um, ruled for a few days, and then he couldn't, he didn't have any power in him. And then Tibra and Amra, they all, that was a split kingdom, but each one of those were evil because they kept following after the evil gods. They kept following after false gods, after Baal and after Moloch and all of the false gods from Egypt. 
And so we see that God is going to bring judgment down on them. But we don't have to fear. We can know that God's power will prevail. <clears throat> God's power will prevail. And so then we look at 1 Kings 16.30, and here's King Ahab. And King Ahab was even more evil than his father's. Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the, of the, in the Lord's eyes than any of those before him. And then 16 is, keeps going and it says, He set up an altar to Baal in the temple of Baal, and he built in Samaria. Ahab made Asherah's poles to arouse and arouse the anger of God, and then did all these kings all these things in front of the kings. So we see that Ahab was more evil than all of his fathers. But, but God always has a plan. God always has a plan. And so it's always amazing to me that God does have a plan. And here is part of his plan. So, you know, we have all of these evil men that are trying to rule. And Ahab becomes the king. Now, if you remember, we talked about these are the kings of Israel and some of the other kings. Now, let me just tell you that during this same time period, you do have Asa, who is a king of Judah, and he was a godly king, and he ruled during this whole time period until another godly, Jehoshaphat, was a king of Judah, and he also was a godly man. And so here we are. <coughs> We're going to see how God's power and God is proven and revealed through Elijah. So in, in chapter 17, 1 Kings 17, remember that's right here. Oh, 1 Kings 17, it's, it's where Elijah was fed by ravens. Elijah, I'm going to kind of summarize this up. Elijah was in the desert, and when he was in the desert, he was striving to to seek the Lord and he didn't have any food or water but God in his power protected him in verse 17 in chapter 17 verse 6 it says the ravens brought him bread in the, and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook so God gave him the, all that he needed to have and then we see that as God was doing that, he was, he was experiencing God's power in his life. Then, uh, some time later, when the brook dried up because there was no rain, the word of the Lord came back to Elijah and he said, Okay, now I want you to go. I want you to go to Zephyrah. And so he went to Zephyrah. And here in Zephyrah, he went up to the town gate and he met a woman who was a widow with her little son there. And he asked her, would you bring me a drink of water in a jar so I may have a drink? And also bring me a piece of bread. And so her response to him is, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she said, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in one little jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and to make my a last meal for myself and my son so that we may eat and then die. Well, Elijah, remember, he knew the power of God. And so Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. We also hear all those angels say that. Remember how many times we heard <laughs> angels say, do not be afraid. Well, here God is reassuring her, do not be afraid. You go home and do as you have said. But first, make me a small loaf of bread for me and what you have and bring it to me and then I will make it. And then make something for yourself. So here's Elijah. And he's talking to this widow. The same thing. Uh huh. Yeah. He's talking to this widow. And as he's talking to this widow, he's telling her, Don't worry. Go home. God has this covered. God's power will prevail. 
And so she thought, okay. So instead of being selfish and just keeping it for herself, she made the walk bread and she gave him a drink. And do you know what God did? God's power was so revealed because he filled up her flower. And Elijah, in verse 17, 16, Kings 17, 16, says, For the flower, jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil never ran dry. And in keeping with the word of the Lord had spoken to the prophet Isaac, Elijah. Because Elijah said, you go home and you use what's in here and you give some to me. And you know, what a great example that is to us to give of the last of, our, of what we have because God will supply the needs and God, God did supply her needs. Not only did God supply her needs when she was giving and when she was um, faithful to do what the prophet had said, but God blessed her abundantly. For the flour in her jar was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. Just as it's just as Elijah had said. It was just as Elijah had said. But then, then her son died. Well, if, if during this time period, if you were a widow and your son dies, you have no one to care for you. You have no one to help you. And you have no one to um, support you. And so she thought, wait a minute. God, you've done all these things with the, with the prophet. Why am I still not having this problem? And so when you have that problem, the woman in 1714 goes back to Elijah and he said, now, she says, now listen, this is my paraphrase. Now listen here. I gave you bread. I gave you water. I did everything you've asked me to do. And now my son has died. And so here Elijah says, give me your son. And so she and he takes her from his takes him from her arms and he says then he cried out to the lord O oh lord my god you have brought tragedy upon this widow i am staying with and caused her son to die so he stretched out his hands over the boy three times and he cried out O oh lord my god let this boy's life return to him and god brought him back to life god brought him back to life through Elijah. Elijah didn't. Elijah was overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit overcame him and he brought life, God brought life back into the widow's son. So here we are and Elijah is experiencing all this power, all these miracles from God and yet now, now after a long time, and now is the third year of the Lord, um, God tells Elijah, go present yourself to Ahab. Well, let me see. I don't think Ahab was a God. Was, let's see if Ahab was a godly king or evil. Ahab was the king of Israel, and he was an evil king. He was an evil king. And so God's telling Ahab, and God is telling Elijah to go to Ahab? I'm sure that he's not real confident that he heard God right, but that's what God told him to do. And because the reason Ahab went to Elijah is because Elijah's, they knew that Elijah was a prophet. They knew that he knew the word of God. They knew that he was going to be able to do what God said. And so he said, I, he went to Ahab and he says, go. And God told him, go, present yourself to Ahab, for I will send rain to the land. Oh, boy. Well, let me just back up here. Because right now, Jezebel has been killing all prophets, except the prophets of Baal. So... He told his widow friend to do not be afraid. And I wonder how, if he heard himself in his mind. Do not be afraid, Elijah. Do not be afraid, for I will send rain on the land. 
And you know, what is hope? Hope is the evidence of, I mean, what is faith? Hope, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. And so we see that Elijah was being fit because of all that he had gone through, he's filled with faith. And because of the faith that he has, he is believing God to continue to do the work, to continue where he's at. And so here Obadiah comes in and Obadiah is another, um, let's see, Obadiah is a prophet, another prophet that came with him. And so as Obadiah came in, he's a servant of the Lord. As Obadiah came in, they walked together and I thought, oh, how nice, because that gave Elijah the confidence to do what he, God wanted to do. So Obadiah and Elijah arrived at Ahaz and they said, go tell your master, Elijah is here. Well, and Obadiah heard that, he goes, what did I do wrong? And he says, no, it's not that. I just want you to come with me. So Obadiah met Ahab. And so Obadiah and Elijah, they went out and they met Ahab. In verse 17 now, it says, when Elijah saw him, is that that troublemaker of Israel? Obadiah went to meet Ahab and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And when you saw Elijah, he was trying to, you know, Elijah's all built up in faith, but what's happening is, is Satan is using someone to steal his faith. So we have a faith stealer coming in and trying to steal Ahab's faith. I mean, I'm sorry, Elijah's faith. Because, he, because of the threats of Jezebel killing all the prophets. And so he knows that his life is very much in her hands. They, they could kill him in, in a second. And so here we go. But you and your fathers, you have abandoned the Lord's commands and you have followed the God of Baal. Now, I want you to do this. So this is Elijah, he's and Obadiah, they're saying, this is what I want you to come and do. Elijah replied, summon the people of all over Israel to meet me on Car Carmel. Bring your 450 prophets of Baal and your 400 prophets of Asherah and all those who eat at Jezebel's table. So Abraham through sent out all the word and all these people came. All these people came, but the people didn't say anything. And so at one point, Elijah went before the people and he said to them, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. You know, the trouble with today, I think that's very similar to what's going on today. Because people are timid and they're shy and they're fearful. They, you know, unfortunately, we're taught fear. We were taught fear during the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. Stay home. Don't talk to anybody. Stay in your place. Don't communicate. Don't connect with each other. Don't hug at each other. Don't touch each other. Well, all of that has a lingering effect in stealing the peace and the joy that God has. Well, in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, but did I read it at the very beginning? It says, for the spirit of God does not make us timid or afraid, but gives us love, power, and a sound mind. And so as we do that, as we follow God, um, we know that God has all of this in control. Remember, you know, during this time, Jezebel is killing God's people. Elijah is going to call out to Baal here now. He calls all these people together. And they chose not to follow God. They're choosing not to follow God because they are wishy-washy. 
it said they heard they heard what what the prophet Elijah had said they heard what the prophet Obadiah said but they're gonna go oh I don't know do I want to follow God real God and have to obey all his commands or am I going to want to be able to follow Baal and 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 do whatever I want to do because the God of Baal is the God of self and the God of Asherah okay so verse 25 Verse 25, now we are there. Okay, so um, so here, what I did to finish that last story. So after he went to Ahab, um, God said to Elijah that there will, rain will come. Because remember, during this time, they're in a severe drought. And so on the seventh time, Elijah, this is all condensed, on the seventh time, Elijah had called out. Elijah had called out to God for rain to come. And he was standing in faith, believing that rain would come. And Elijah said, You go and you tell Ahab, pitch up your chariot, go down before the rain stops you. And then he picked up his belt, and Elijah beat Ahab. He ran faster than the chariot. He ran faster than that chariot. Okay, so let's back up a little bit here. So we have Elijah going. So we see all of the things that happen that God is helping to build up the faith for Elijah and in his power and in his strength. Well, we're going to take up today our, our study. We're all caught up now. We're in verse 25. In verse 25. And it says here, verse 25, it says, But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, This is what God said. He's, re he's relaying messages. I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left because Jezebel killed all the rest. But Baal has 400 prophets and 450 prophet, prophet. You go get them. You get two bulls for us. Let them choose one of them for themselves and cut it into pieces and build it as, and I will prepare the other bull and put it on the fire. Then we will call on you. Then he says, Then Elijah's telling them, He's saying, Then you go and you call on the name of your God, little g, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. So, right here, we see that Elijah is predicting what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. Then, the then all the people said, What you sound, say sounds good. Well, that's a great idea. Let's 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 do this. Let's do this. Okay. Elijah, you have a good idea. Let's test these two gods. Who's gonna win? As the power of the true one holy Lord of Lord, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, God going to win? We'll see. But at this point, you know. Elijah is calling out to them and, and the people. He said, he said, these he, they were remember, they were wavering. If the Lord God is God, follow him. And that's the one side of this. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But they were not sure what they wanted to do. They're wishy-washy. They're kind of lukewarm. I don't know. Do I want to go this way? Do I want to follow my God? Do I want to follow the God of Baal? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. This sounds like a good idea. Let me see what happens here. I'll, I know. I'll make a decision after we see the God of Baal to win this. But he doesn't win. He doesn't win. So in verse, in verse 25, Elijah said to the prophet of Baal, here. Would you read verse 25 right there? 
beating man of sin. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Baal. what's that? Of Baal. Yep. Baal. Since you are as so num numbers, choose for yourselves one bowl and prepare the, it first. Yep, prepare it first. And mm -hmm. then, then, then they look at the bowl with the, that he gave them, prepared it, and called on the name of, what's that? A Baal, yep. Okay, so choose one of the bowls and prepare it. First, since there are so many of you, okay, what is this? This is like 850 to one. Because remember, there's one prophet, that would be Elijah. He's the only one. 850 of the false prophets to one true God prophet. Since you are so many, that 850, call on the name of your little God, G, but do not light the fire yet. So they took the bull that was given to them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal. They called on the name of Baal. From morning until night, until noon. Oh, Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered them. So, what did they do? They danced around the altar that they had made. So the first thing that we see is that they're crying out to their God. Okay? So they, and then, there was no answer. So Elijah comes in, and Elijah begins to taunt them. And he mocks them and he says, I don't think I have very you, you better call out. Oh, okay. Shout loudly, he said. Surely he is a God. Okay, so number one, they told him to shout louder. Number two, perhaps he's deep in thought and can't hear you. Okay, well, if he's God, he should be on the present. He should be there all the time. Maybe he's wandering away. Maybe he has something, you know, that he's doing. Some of the commentaries I was reading said, maybe he went to the bathroom. <laughs> well, if I a God, gods probably don't have to go to the bathroom. Um, and so, surely, if he's a God, perhaps he's deep in thought. Or maybe he's too busy. Or maybe he's traveling. Well, those kind of indicate that he's not really a God God, not, but then maybe he's a flesh and blood, some kind of a God in flesh and blood. I don't know. Doesn't sound very good to me, not looking hopeful. So, number two, maybe he wandered away. Maybe he can't hear you. So, number three, so these are four things that are going to happen to him. Number four, but maybe he's sleeping. You better go wake him up. Does God ever sleep? Does God ever sleep? I suppose. Oh, no, God never sleeps. God is always awake. Maybe, but those little gods, those false gods, they're sleeping. You better wake them up. You better shout louder. Shout louder! Shout louder! So they start shouting louder. <laughs> and they start shouting louder and louder. And then in verse 28, and this is so sad, they started shouting so loudly, they began slashing at themselves. They split their, they were cutting themselves. They were cut themselves with knives and spear according to their custom, according until blood gushed all over them. All afternoon, they kept raving and offering the evening sacrifice, but there was no sound. No one answered. No one paid attention. And I it says, so they shouted louder and louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. So the problem is that because they were so hopeless, 
They were, they were trying to, they were in so hopeless and in such pain that they began cutting themselves, trying to ease their pain, trying to um, identify, self-sacrifice. They, they wanted to say, okay, if I, if I sacrifice my body, if I, if, and there was, there was a lot of belief that mutilation of the body um, and self-sacrifice and self-punishing um, was a godly trait, but that's against the Mosaic law. But that's against the Mosaic law. And Israel should have known that. Israel should have known that, but they didn't. They had walked away from that. They had followed the evils of the fathers, which are the false gods. And so no one, no one was able to wake up their God. They sacrificed, they yelled, and they, so they yelled, and they screamed, and they sacrificed, and they hollered, and they tried to do all kinds of things to get their God to answer their, answer their prayer. But they didn't. God didn't. Those little gods, those false gods cannot answer prayer. False gods cannot answer prayer. And as they were hopelessly searching, as they were cutting themselves to ease their pain, and they're relentless to their little G God did not bring any power into their lives. Only destruction and delusions. Only more lies came through. Oh, Only scary. more lies came through. I like it. It's scary. And God's power was revealed, and Elijah spoke the word in accordance with the Levitical law. And so Elijah said to them, Come near to me. Did you know that so Jezebel, all... that Nancy Pelosi is a descendant of Jezebel? <laughs> you know that, Maybe so. Yeah, we talked about that in our class. Yeah, I can believe it. Then he repaired the Lord's altars that had been torn down. So here's God's power is going to be revealed. Elijah is, is speaking in with God's word in accordance with the Levitical law. I'm no, I'm not on the right. No, you are right there. You're it doing fine. Book. Yeah. <laughs> it is this. No, I have a different book. I remember I have all my writings and all my notes in yeah. there. So, um, God wanted Elijah to remind them of who he was. He wanted a reminder of who he was in Jesus Christ. And so here's Elijah, and he's reminding all these people what he has done in the past. Elijah took 12 stones, and according to the numbers of the tribes and the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel will be your name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see. I see. And he built altars with stones in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar and to hold enough, about four gallons of water. Next, he arranged wood, and he cut up a bull, and he placed it on the wood, and he said, he four, three things happened here, okay? So he's trying to prove to the, all these um, false believers that God, our God, is really the true and proven one, the powerful one. So number one, he filled four water pots with water and poured it on top of a fire. Well, if you pour water on top of wood, will it burn? No. Then he said the second time, do it again. So he poured more water on top of it. And then he did it a third time, so much so that it was flooded. And the water was running all over the ground, all around the altar, because there was so much water. And I wonder, you know, we sometimes know, need to have the water to our bodies need to have just in our minds. We need to flood our minds with the watering of the word. And as the water of the word floods our minds, that's the word of God. And that word of God can get planted in our spirits. And so I was thinking about that and I thought, well, that's a kind of like never give up. Because here they are, they're 850 prophets of Baal coming against one prophet of God. And Elijah never gave up. Elijah never gave up. Now his time is coming. Now he's going to see the power of God. And he's going to see, I am your servant. And at the time for the offering, 
of the even, evening offering, the prophet Elijah approached the altar and he said to God, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel and I am your servant. And at your hand I have done all these things. Remember, God gave him all of this advice as to what to do. And so he was following, he was a servant of God, he was a bond servant of God, and told and was doing what God wanted him to do. And so he says, because I have followed your word, because I have followed your decrees, he knew the blessings that followed. When we follow God's word and we follow God's law, blessings come into our lives. Did you know that? It's so true. And so I've done all these things. Answer me now, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you are God, that you, the Lord, are God, and that you have not turned your backs on them. So he says, answer them. Answer me, O God. He says it twice because he knew. He knew that Elijah was confident that God was going to reveal his power because he had proven God. As a testimony to all others, now he wanted God to prove who he was to them. He had already proven it to Elijah, but now he wanted the power of God to be proven to all of those 100 and, or those 850 people. He wanted to prove his supremacy over them. And then the Lord spoke, then, listen to what happened. Listen to what happened. Then... The fire of the Lord fell and burned up all the sacrifice, all the wood, all the stones, all the soil, and licked up the water in the trench. And when the, all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried out, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So here they are. They are now believing that he is God. God has been proven. God's power licked up not only the fire it consumed the sacrifice but it consumed all of the rocks and it consumed all of the um, it consumed everything around it the Lord is God the Lord he is God and Elijah shared the victory with them and when all the people saw this they fell Prostrate. That means they lay up flat out on their face and were humbled in graciousness and thanksgiving. And they cried out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets of Baal and don't let anyone get away. And so they were seized. And so Elijah and Ahab said, go eat and drink at the sound of the heavy rains. So now Elijah goes back to the prophet, um, I'm sorry, to the king, and he says, here's what's going to happen. The king is, God's heard my prayers. He took up the sacrifice. His answer is going to come. The rain will fall. And you know, sometimes we are, the rain falls so that it floods our, it floods us. Well, when we have a flood, what happens in a flood? A flood takes out all of the immediate and it get, it actually gets rid of some of the debris along the edges but it leaves a nice coating of silt and that's very fertile that's why so many times by the river the soil is so rich and fertile and so we see that god's power was proven and that power is available in us through the holy spirit which is why I started with the very first verse. Because as we continue in God's word, he will give us the power to overcome. For the spirit of God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And I, we, I just thank God for that. Because we don't have to worry. We have a sound mind because God has given that to us. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. That we, as we walk in 
his ways, as we talk in his ways, as we follow God's calling, he is there to be in our hearts. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are with us at all times. We pray that you just continue to work and speak and um, just lead each one of us to become all that you would want us to be. And we pray that your strength and blessing would fill our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Have a great day, guys. Bye.